Hey everyone, it's been over two minutes. I haven't been raped yet. Guess I'll just have to start without you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Diana Davison, a writer and Canadian men's rights activist. I've been in research mode lately, preparing to build a wiki for the relaunching of registerher.com, connecting, or registering, the activity of specific individuals and groups whose legal mischief has succeeded in bypassing democracy to get their twisted feminist version of human rights installed via the courts instead of through the parliamentary process. That's not my topic for the day, but you can follow that progress on canadiancock.org and registerher.com. Instead, I'm starting today with a quote by Soren Kierkegaard, because I like it. People demand freedom of speech as a compensation for the freedom of thought, which they seldom use. So I ask, what good is freedom of speech when your mind is controlled by shame and worry of what everyone else will think of you? What good is the right to speak your mind when your mind is silenced by fear of public execution? Political correctness is a scourge upon our society that has not only condemned the average person to silence, but constrained the media, whose job it is to question authority and report events without bias. To the point, they quiver at a contentious word. Political correctness is turning our universities, which are meant to be dangerous breeding grounds for innovative thought, into regurgitated pablum, fit for nothing but baby birds with their mouths wide open to receive the vomit. This is what feminism has wrought. In a book called Professing Feminism, former feminist educators expose the unscholarly and unprofessional behavior of the radicals controlling feminist discourse in the classrooms, which serve to zombify the students into terrified slaves of rhetoric, with no ability left for critical thought. Political correctness is a no-win situation, by design. Open dialogue becomes impossible, and those claiming to be morally superior never learn to handle true debate. We must not cater to the amoebas. We've descended into absurdity. We've got accomplished businesswomen sloganizing an initiative to ban words from the English language, as if eliminating words for thoughts has one iota of effect upon the thought behind the word. Ban bossy a campaign that tries to pretend that strong women are too sensitive to the word bossy to keep doing their jobs. Damn. What people call me doesn't matter. What you have to do, if you want to get in my way, is perform my job better than I do. That's the real issue behind success in business, and every person who takes them seriously knows it. And if you happen to do my job better than me, I'll just figure out how to do it better. That's how you get to the top, not by banning words, but by competing. I was asked by a, a few commenters to give my opinion on Ban Bossy. Well, here it is. It's a campaign that fails on every level. The creators ought to be fired for incompetence. Want to know why so few women make it to the top? Because they think of so-called solutions like banning words from the dictionary. Fucktards, go back to the kitchen. You're not ready to play with the big boys. Speaking of fucktards in kitchens, some guy decided to send me an email sharing a terribly important inside scoop about how women are treated terribly in kitchens, the food industry. He knows this because he happens to work in the food industry. Well, so do some good friends of mine. Here's my response. Why are you telling me this story? The food industry is similar to other industries. The people with power paid their dues, and they make everyone under them pay those dues plus more. Women don't like to be talked down to, shouted at, humiliated, blamed for other people's mistakes, or generally treated like shit in any way. So they quit, or move to a lower pressure area of the industry. Don't tell me you believe in the patriarchy. Men take heaps of abuse every day on their way up the employment ladder. They just deal with it. They want to reach the top badly enough. When women get some balls, they'll stop falling off the ladder too. Until then, the public gets to pay for all of their sexual harassment and purported discrimination lawsuits 
because they have no guts or sense of humor. So basically, go tell your story to someone who cares. Presuming we can all agree that massacring the dictionary is not going to change people's thoughts or how the real world works. If you're acting like an asshole, that's what people will see and that's what they'll call you. If you're not acting like an asshole, then what are you worried about? Just do your job and do it well. As the proverbial mother says, they're just jealous. Now pull up your pants and move on like an adult. So, let's talk about what freedom of speech does and does not do for you. It does not mean that what you think is right. The right to an opinion does not make your opinion right. It's quite incredible how many people don't understand this. Feminists count for many of those dim-witted people. Breaking news for all feminists. You've been lied to. Lived experience is a subjective bit of so-called knowledge. That you lived it negates it as objective material. Go get some real facts. My lived experience is that your lived experience is bullshit. Now what have you got? Sure, you can believe anything you want, and you're free to tell us what you believe, but the beautiful thing about free speech is that it lets us know exactly who the morons are. I defend not only my own right to free speech, I defend the right for every fungus-sucking bottom feeder to tell me exactly how stupid they are. Please, do. I'm past the point of shock. The only real reason to silence your opposition is cowardice. That's not one of my flaws. Oh, a quick note to whichever feminist tried to get me fired at work by outing me as an MRA. Why don't you try defending your beliefs in a more honorable way? Thankfully, I work for people who believe in free speech. And now for the rape joke of the week. You know you wanted it. <laughs>